Amen. I tell you, it's, it's just amazing. I, I, was, I was doing some notes on this. And usually I, I finish the notes and I, I airdrop it to the iPad. Mm -hmm. The airdrop, the won't drop, the not drop, and everything else just went drop today. So I said, Lord, I'm going to just put the whole computer up there because I can't get it to drop to my phone. I can't get it to drop to my technology. is not dependable. Amen. 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 That's why we do those things called Bibles. We just turn the pages when we know Amen. it's going to work every time you open it up. So, Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. I'm glad that you're here with I'm us this morning. you're here with us. Amen. Amen. The Bible says wherever there are two or three. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. It says wherever there are two or three gathered together. Yeah. We're gathered. Amen. And we have to touch and agree on any one thing. Amen. Then he told us he'll be in the midst. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. So I believe he's here this morning. Amen. 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 I solicit your prayers as my wife and I will be traveling this afternoon. Um, we have a son that lives in Vegas that is getting married on Tuesday. I don't know why they waited. They're getting married Tuesday, but they're having a wedding in June. Amen. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get it. But uh, <laughs> uh, their desire is to get married 2-22-22 at 2. Amen. I, I, told, Amen. I, I told them, you two are on my nerve. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that he's uh, assuming the responsibility Amen. of being a husband and they have a baby on the way and they have their Seventh baby on the way. Amen. Amen. Uh, he's the one that's making me have so many grandchildren. Amen. 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 So they have they have another one on the way April the first. But pray for traveling grace for her and I as we travel. We know that it's a holiday weekend. And Amen. We have to be there the first of our children getting married. Mm -hmm. Amen. I hope Amen. it's not the last. They all need to be married and gone and be responsible. Amen. Amen. And move out of my house. Amen. 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 So pray with us as we travel. We'll be back on Wednesday morning. So we will be here for Bible study. Amen. We'll be here Wednesday night. Amen. Amen. If you will, I just want to share with you real briefly. If you will, meet me over in the 118th number of Psalms. Psalms 118. We're just going to look at one passage. I'm going to see if you noticed something today. See if you noticed something. If you notice, every Sunday morning I greet you with this passage of scripture. Mm -hmm. This particular morning I didn't greet you with the scripture because it is the scripture for this Sunday morning. Amen? Mm -hmm. 11824 simply says, This is the day yeah. that the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. We will rejoice mm -hmm. and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it just one more again if that's all right. This is the day yeah. the Lord has made. Yes. We will rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Yes. I just want to use as a subject for a few minutes. God did it. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God did it. God did it. Amen. Amen. Take your seats. Come on. We need to rejoice and be glad. Amen. We need to rejoice. Father, thank you now. Speak clearly, Holy Ghost. Have your way. All of you know of me. We thank you, O oh God, for this word. We ask you to let, let it fall, Father God, on fertile grounds. I, I ask you to penetrate the hearts of those that are listening. Allow us to apply it to have a better understanding, to refocus our thoughts, that we may give you glory in all that we do. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If I can briefly just give you a little... Just a little history, a little back, just a little bit, just so I can set the tone. Mm -hmm. Historically, this passage was a part of a liturgy of praise in which worshipers recognized a feast day for giving thanks to God. Mm -hmm. In other words, they, 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 it, it, back when this was written, it was, it, was, it was a time where they understood that it was a particular day, because they knew God made all the days. Yeah. But it was an incident that happened, it was a celebration that happened that would cause the worshipers to recognize that it was just something special about this day. Yeah. Have we got a witness? Yeah. With these words, the people acknowledged that God had established the day for a special purpose, and therefore, they would carry out his purpose by rejoicing 
and being glad. Hallelujah. And if I could just kind of give you a, 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 a snapshot picture of what that looks like, um, 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 it's almost like you were, you, you were looking for this dream job. Mm -hmm. And you had been praying and you had been preparing for this dream job. And it seemed as if everybody was getting the dream job except for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then when you least expected, a job that you didn't even apply for called you. Mm -hmm. To give you the job that you have been in search of. Mm -hmm. That's more than just favor, but that's God showing up on time, in yeah. his time, yeah. making sure that he gives. And that, at that moment, it becomes this special moment for you. Yes. But we don't include it being the day that the Lord has made, but we include it in that moment. Yes. God did something wonderful. Now we shout and we call yes. it for yes. But it's something special about that day. Yes. That made you rejoice and be glad. Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. And, and, and years go down the line. Mm -hmm. When you retire from that job, you're going to be reminded or you're going to share with some of your people. You're going to share with them. You remember the day. Yeah. Come on. I want somebody to catch this. You're going to remember the day yeah. that God blessed you with that job yeah. because it was because of the Lord yeah. and that job in that day that helped you get where you are this day yeah. and you say I retired with good money I retired yeah. with this and it was all because God that day mm. did something for me and I'm still rejoicing yeah. this day yeah. Yeah. the tone here set in this particular passage Psalm 118 is joyful and trusting and seems to have specifically composed or it has been specifically composed for a service of thanksgiving yeah. The writer here, he enters into the temple courts carrying together with them a company of worshipers and they give thanks to the Lord in a sort of liturgy, liturgy involving the congregation, the ministers, and the sanctuary. So in other words, when he made reference to, we will rejoice. Amen. Yes. Amen. He made sure that he allowed us to know that it was a corporate thing that was going on. Yes. Have I got a witness? Amen. Even though your victory may not be at the same time as my victory, we still need to rejoice together because in one sense or another, we're still victorious. Together. Let me, let, me show, let, me, let me show you a page of rejoicing together for being victorious. Every one of us can look at each other this morning in the same place at the same time because God did the same thing for us. We are victorious because death had to pass our door and not stop our door. After inviting the, com the community to unite in thanksgiving and praise, you can find that in verses 2 through 4, the writer here celebrates the Lord's steadfast love, his deliverance from death, and his overcoming or his overgoing, his outgoing, ongoing protection and his care. Remember, remember, in this passage, we have those that did not believe in Jesus trying to discredit who he was. Hallelujah. But yet those that believed in Jesus are allowed to know, no, not only is he the stone, but he is the chief cornerstone. Amen, Amen. Amen Pastor. What's cornerstone? See, there's it's, it's, it's a reason for the, the church name, cornerstone. He, he, he's a chief cornerstone. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. The entire song commemorates God's victory over the enemies of Israel. In this context, we can fully understand the statement, this is the day that the Lord has made. The people were recognizing that the day of feasting and celebration was the Lord's doing. Because the Lord had triumphed over their enemies. God's people could now praise and worship Yahweh in his victory. In other words, the people were declaring that this is the day we remember. Hmm. When the Lord defeated our enemy. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to set this up because I want y'all to catch this. The Lord had delivered and the Lord had made it happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Lord delivered yes. and the Lord made it happen. Yes. And yes. this is what gets me, Mother. <laughs> we nowadays seem to take for granted. The victories that we are given every single day. See, this particular passage back in that time, it, 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 
was an amazing astonishment that they had overcome all of the people that were trying to come up against them. That they, that they had to stand firm in their belief in Jesus even though we find people that was discrediting who he was and trying to dump that on who we are. Come on here somebody. Amen. But yet and still, Jesus still reigned to be who he was and his mission was still done according to how it needed to be done. And now we find that there is rejoicing over the victories of the enemies and all of these different situations that we are dealing with. Let's look at it today because our enemies today look a lot different than the enemies that they had back in those days. All right. All right. Guess, this. Guess who our number one enemy is today? Mm -mm. COVID-19. He's our enemy that, that, that is not allowing himself to physically be seen, mm -hmm. but he is moving around rapidly messing with all of God's people. Mm -hmm. He's an enemy that God has still allowed some of his people to have victory over. Have I got a witness? But the problem is we focus too much on the enemy yes. instead of on those who have power over the enemy. Yes. 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 Our, our enemy today seems to be these gas prices. Our enemy today seems to be how much chicken costs nowadays. Yes. Y'all know I bought my wife some chicken wings. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago from a laundry wage mother and for 15 <laughs> wings it cost 38 dollars hallelujah hallelujah and that wasn't with french fries or celery and carrots <laughs> and wanted to charge me extra for ranch dressing i said y'all lost your mind <laughs> well the price of wings then went up well then i don't need no wing give me a neck <laughs> Amen, somebody. Our enemy are the things that are in the world right now that have been put in place to tear us down, to keep us depressed, to make us feel as if we can't make it. But I come by to share something with you this morning. That the writer says, this is the day. All right, all right. And I want you to understand that this being the day. Mm. This is a day that God predestined before the foundation of the earth. Yeah. And what gets me is this, Josh. God knew this day would come. Not only did he know this day would come, but he knew everything that would happen in this day. He knew that he would have you here this day. He knew that you would come into the church house this day. He knew that you would have your hair braided all the way back this day. He knew that no matter what was going on this day, you would be smiling when I said something about your heart this day. God knew it all even before the foundations of the earth. So therefore, if we understand that this is the day yes. that the Lord yes, this is the day yes, yes. God says before he created everything on the earth he said that February the 20th 2022 would exist All right. All right. he not only said it would exist but he also said that Cedar Grove's doors would be open he also right. says right. that it would be these people in the church this day he also says yeah. that no matter what they're going through they're still going to be in the house of the Lord it doesn't matter. He, he also says they may not be where they want to be but they show up where they used to be this day God knew before the foundation of the earth and that gives us the understanding that God did it Hallelujah. look at your neighbor and say God did it this day then he goes on to say this is the day that the Lord Hallelujah. Has made. Yes, yes. So when we think about God made something, and what God made, man cannot make. Amen. What God made, man cannot alter. Amen. What God made is something that He put in in place for us mm. to be able to enjoy yes. and not for us to fall apart in. Have I got a witness? This particular day that God has made, God did it. And He did it for a reason and a purpose. And so while we're all looking for reasons why we ought to celebrate, we ought to celebrate that he thought enough of us to make this day. Yeah, yeah. And make sure that in this day, we had our right mind. That in this day, we were able to give him praise. That in this day, even though the enemy has come up against us, he still has not been given permission to take us out this day. I wish I had somebody praying with me right now. You may not be where you want to be at this day. Yes, Things in your bank account may not be the way it wants to be this day. Hallelujah. You may not have the house that you want this day. Yes, but I need you to understand that this day, your praise should be where God wants it to be. This day, your mind should be on the heavenly things. This day, you ought to be glad that God says, I'm giving you yet this day for you to give me praise and give me honor because man could not make this day. Man was cloning everything, but man could 
not make this day your first time. Right. 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 But since God predestined this day, mm. he's made this day. Yes. He says, we will rejoice. Yes. Yes. I want you to listen to this. When we rejoice and glad, mm. we will indicate faith in action. Mm -hmm. Because when you put will on anything, it means that you are, it's a progressive move going forward. Have I got a witness? Yes. So when it says, I will go to the store, mm. yes. it meant that you have an understanding that my will is that I'm on my way. Hallelujah. You didn't say I might go to the store. You didn't say I'm thinking about going to the store. You say I will go to the store. Hallelujah. When you tell your babies I will beat your behind. Yes, I don't know about y'all's mamas, but when my mama said I will whoop your behind. Yes. It didn't matter if it was two days later, her <laughs> will was going to be done. <laughs> and so when they say I will, that simply means that that's faith in action. Because now we're believing that we're going to do something because we put the promise on it that we will. Yeah. So it says here, we will rejoice and be glad. Yeah. So when we are glad, glad is action in love and appreciation. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. When somebody is glad that they gave you something, their face usually shows this nice smile or this nice gratitude. Have I got a witness? Yeah. A hug will usually give you some kind of indication mm -hmm. that their glory, that their gratitude is in place. I want somebody to catch this. A good thank you every once in a while yeah, yeah. will let you know that they're glad about something yeah. that was done for them. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. it is action in love. Yeah. If I love you, I'm going to make sure that you know that I appreciate you. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And it's not going to take 15 days for me to let you know I appreciate you. Right. If you gave me a cookie and I was hungry, I'm going to tell you thank you for the cookie. Yeah. Not after I'm full, but it's right when you get thank you yeah. for the cookie. Yeah. You have no idea what that's done. Uh, somebody, somebody right now, you smell it, you smell it, I, I smell some vittles going on. And when you get finished and you go downstairs and there's some great fast waiting on you, you ought to, your stomach is telling you thank you, so you ought to rejoice and be glad in the fact that somebody. Pray with me, Pop, pray with me, Pop. So now we have to understand that when he says we will, it was something that ignited them to even be able to go forth and recognize that it was something put in place yes. for us to give God yes. what he deserved. Yes. 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 We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Let me give you some reasons why we should rejoice and be glad in this. Because we know God did it. But in Psalms 31 and 7, verses 7 and 8, it says this. I will rejoice. And be glad in your faithfulness or your faithful love because you have seen my afflictions and have not handed me over to the enemy. Right. You have set my feet in a spacious place. Hallelujah. And I want you to understand that if God did not make the day for you to recognize that he didn't turn you over uh -huh. to your enemy. Yeah. All right. All right. Because I need you to know right now, I don't care how long you've been in church, and I don't care that you come in church looking good today. Yeah. I don't care that you came in here with a praise in your mouth. I don't care that you had a big Bible in your hand. I don't care that you read your Bible every single day this week. I don't care about none of that simply because we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And since we have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, if God was anything like us, he would have turned us over to our enemies a long time ago. But when the writer says he looked beyond my faults and he saw all of my needs. Yeah. I need you to understand that if he didn't turn me over to the enemy that means I still got work to do. If he didn't turn me over to the enemy that means the day that he has made he still got a purpose for my life. And so therefore he's, he did it for me so I know he's doing it for you. So I will rejoice. Why? Because he didn't turn me over. Why? Because he didn't turn his back on me. Why? Because everything that I was going through he still showed love. When I was in my pain and my infliction and my sin. He didn't turn his back on me like my friends do. I wish I had a witness. Have you ever had a friend in your 
your life. Uh -huh. Mike, that seemed to seem like every time you were doing good, they wanted to rock with you. But the moment you got caught doing something you wasn't supposed to do, they didn't know you too well. Okay. But I come by to tell you that even in the midst of all of your troubles, yeah. the Bible lets us know that when we are friends of God, God will never take his hands off of us and he'll never leave us in that place all by ourselves. He may let us sit there long enough to learn the lesson. But what should have happened to us doesn't happen to us because of grace and mercy. I wish I had a witness up in here. And you'll never be able to understand grace and mercy if he does not let you see the day. That he's made. But when he allows you to see the day, he allows you to see the day with grace and mercy. And in case you didn't understand what grace and mercy is, it, it looks a little bit like this. Grace is giving you the things that you don't deserve. Why mercy is keeping you from the things that you do deserve. So now, even though I've sinned and fallen short, the punishment that I do deserve, because of this thing called mercy, God keeps me in the palm of his hand. And it doesn't happen if he does not allow me to see the day that he has made. And so therefore, God did it, and I ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Another reason why I should rejoice is in Psalms 118 verses 1 and 2. When it says, I owe give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. I don't know about y'all, but I found him to be good. I don't know about y'all, but he's good not just sometimes, but he's good all the time. He's so good that he took the stars, the moon, and the sun. He put them in the same place. He's so good that he separated them from day and from night. He's so good that a whole 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago, even before he said, let there be light, he said that I would be here. Ain't that all right? He said, what the enemy has said about you. Yeah, yeah. He said, I'll put you here. Yeah. This day that I made, yeah. and all he's waiting for, Pop, yeah. Yeah. is to see if you'll be glad yeah. and rejoice in it. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that it says, for his mercy yeah. endures yeah. forever. Yeah. And I don't know about y'all, but that it ever lasts a long time. Yeah. As a matter of fact, ever, 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 ever? Yeah. No, ever, ever. Yeah. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah. Even when you're not here, uh -huh. forever is still ever. Yeah. And yeah. since it's forever, yeah. that means when you're gone, yeah. mercy's still here. Yeah. Yeah. God's still creating uh -huh. that day. Somebody should be rejoicing. Yeah. The other reason why I should rejoice and be glad because beyond being sick uh -huh. yes, yes. beyond being sick in my body yes, sir, yes, sir. I still have a praise yes, I'm not being viewed but I'm being seen yes, sir. Yes, sir. brother when you look up here yeah. I'm not laying in a wooden box yes, sir. Yes, sir. but I'm standing here yes. looking back at you yes, simply because this is the day that the Lord has raised. Yes, yes. I, I got a reason not to rejoice yes, and to be glad. The next thing is my money may be funny and my chain may be strange. But my Bible says that he will supply all of my needs. I might be short, but he's never short. I may not have it, but he's always got it. And when I need it, he's faithful to give it. Yes, God. Yes, God did it. I got eyes that I can see. I got ears 
they set order in place yeah. to give God a certain kind of praise for these different triumphs that they, are, yeah. they were facing. Yeah. But when Jesus came, he gave the ultimate triumph. Mm. Yes. Because what he did was he came to do what? Establish salvation. Yes. And I don't know about you, that means that every day yes. that he makes, we ought to rejoice and be glad. Yeah. Yeah. Stick with the cross. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to face punishment the way they did before he died. Yeah. Yeah. We ought to rejoice because the promise was made that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. No matter how deep the trouble is, yes, if he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, that means that it's not as bad as you think it is because he's in there with you. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And if I don't have no other reason to joy to be glad in it, I can go to John 3, 16 that says, for God so loved the world that he gave the ultimate sacrifice of his son to die for an old raggedy man such as me. So for that reason, I will rejoice. 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 I don't always understand the pain that I got to suffer. But I will rejoice. I don't always understand the troubles that I see. But I will rejoice. Listen, it reminds me of a little story. I'm going to tell y'all this and then I'm going to go. Of a little boy, Josh, that was in school. And he seemed to have these things called hand-me-downs. And every year in school, he had the same old hand-me-downs. And all the other kids would talk about him. And he'd go home and he said, Mama, when is things going to get better? And Mama told him, don't worry about it, baby. Just rejoice and be glad. Because the same God that blessed them going to bless us in his time. He went on through junior high school. He went on through high school. And at the graduation time, he came in them hand-me-downs yes. and them ragged his shoes Hallelujah. and everybody was laughing at him uh -huh. and he looked over at mama and mama said just rejoice uh -huh. and be glad yes. because this is the day yes. and God will yes. bless us in his time yes. so the boy graduated went on to college Hallelujah. graduated college yes. and then one day uh -huh. they had Reunion. Yes, yes. It was about 10 years later. Uh -huh. And everybody was at this fine country club. Yes, hallelujah. Looking all to the dapper. Yes. Mother thinking they had it goes and all. And then all of a sudden, this $100,000 car, uh -huh. it pulls up with this fine. Fine, fine specimen of a woman <laughs> sitting on the passenger side. Yeah. And this guy gets out, uh -huh. looking all dapper, yeah. with a $1,000 suit on, yeah. Yeah. some $700 shoes, opens up the door for this fine... <laughs> of a woman. And they recognized her because she was a TV movie star. They got out the car and now Josh, they all standing and they're saying who that is. Now everybody done lost their correct English. And they went back to Ebonics and they looked and they said Chantel, who that is? He don't look like nobody that we've seen before. Mother, they kept on wondering who he was in that fine car with that fine <laughs> fine specimen of a woman. So eventually, 
Somebody said that's Willie. They said the same Willie that was raggedy in school. The same Willie that wore the same shoes every year. The same Willie that was dirty and bummy looking. There can't be Willie. And how will it get that far? Hallelujah. <laughs> Specimen of a woman. So somebody said, Willie, oh Willie, Willie, oh Willie. And Willie said, yes sir, that's me. Yeah, yeah. They said, Willie, yeah. how'd you get what you got? And Willie said, you see that big hotel? When you get off the freeway, yeah, yeah. that belongs to me. He said, you see this country club that you're in right now? He said, that belongs to me. He said, you see that big old industrial company that's making multi-million dollars every other year? That belongs to me. By the way, that fine <laughs> specimen of a woman, Josh, that be my wife. So somebody said, Willie, how did this happen? And Willie said, every day that y'all talked about me, I went home and I talked to my mother. And my mother would say, just rejoice and be glad. Because one day, the Lord will bless. When I got in high school and y'all made me feel bad, I talked to my mother and she said, just rejoice and be glad. Because one day, the Lord is going to bless. So now, y'all talk about me, but the Lord encouraged me because I when I fell down, I rejoice when I was ostracized. I rejoice over the little things. I had holes in my shoes, but I still had shoes. My clothes was hand me down, but they were still on my body. I had to ride the bus, but at least I got there. And when I graduated college, a job was given to me that opened up a door for me to invest in myself. I realized this day that the Lord made, every day that the Lord made, I woke up, I rejoiced, and was glad. So everything you see is a product of my rejoicing. It's a product of my gladness giving it. It's a product of my steadfastness. It's the product of everything that y'all did. You my enemies. But God gave me victory. So by the way, let me help you out. Bartender, drinks is on the house. Food is on the house. Accountants, give them all their money back. Because as I will rejoice and be glad. And then when they looked up, his mother came from out the back with a big smile. And she said, Willie, didn't I tell y'all that in time the Lord will bless? So while you're waiting on your blessing, read. 
be glad. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't know about you, but in the midst of my situation, I will rejoice and be glad because this is, this is. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Right. I already got the fine. Yeah. Yeah. Specimen of a woman. Yeah. And I don't need the hundred thousand dollar car, but I sure take a country club. Yeah. Come on up and get somebody. Yeah. Pastor Wes, you may not play golf now, but I had a country club. You yeah. sure yeah. for free. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If I had a country club, might not have a boat too. Whatever size you want, so you hit the key, go as often as you want. You might smile, you might shoot, and you ain't got to pay the gas. The gas will be in it for you. I tell Mike that Mike be in the night or somewhere. And you say the gas was free. And Mike is telling the fish, I'm rejoicing because I'm in Ecuador with a boat that I gotta pay the gas for. Y'all ought to rejoice and get on my hook so we can go home. And my mama can rejoice from eating what jumped on my hook. I wish I had a witness. Everybody rejoice me on. <laughs> Amen and hear somebody. Amen. That passage of scripture, if you read that whole 118th number of Psalms, you will find out that they repeated the same thing. Amen. That his mercy endures. Yes, yes. They began to just continue to repeat that his mercy endures. Yeah. It didn't matter what was going on, his mercy. It was a reminder that everything that they went through, God's mercy was still established in place and allowed for them to overcome. I don't know about you, but you're looking at somebody that the doctor said wasn't going to make it out of the hospital yeah. in 2020 from COVID. Yeah. There were people worse off than me. Not worse off than me. I was worse off than most folk. Yeah. And folks didn't make it. Yeah. But I need you to understand that he told death to behave because it wasn't my time. You think I'm not going to rejoice me? Every once in a while I close my eyes and God gives me a glimpse of when I laid in that hospital with these tubes all up in my nose and how folks was coming in the room telling me that they didn't know what to, what to do and, and how my oxygen and all this stuff was. And I still was steadfast and unmovable because I heard the voice of the Lord say, he said, your faith, the display of your faith has been stronger than your confession of faith. Yes. He said, you've shown people in your actions louder than you've said it in your words. And for that, I'm going to be with you. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. And when he said that, I had a comfort. Hmm. And folks didn't understand it, but when it was a peace in my room that when they came in, if they didn't know God, they would stop and ask questions. Hallelujah. I had a respiratory therapist that came in and said, I've never seen nobody in your condition progress so fast. And all I can just think of is this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And then let me show you how the enemy works. Because he sends a respiratory therapist in one night, Josh. I'm on oxygen, high level oxygen. I could not be off of it because if I was off of it, my oxygen levels would drop so low that I could literally just stop breathing because my oxygen was too low. So the girl comes in to do my breathing treatment. And she was in such a rush that she finished my breathing treatment, put my oxygen mask back on, but didn't turn on my oxygen. Hallelujah. 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 This was change of shift late night. Mm -hmm. So quite naturally, the nurses are not tending to the panel like they normally do. But when that light went off because of my oxygen level dropped, it happened to be a nurse sitting there. It wasn't by coincidence. Mm. It was a nurse that was off shift looking and saw it go off. And they sent the charge nurse in and they said, Mr. Nichols, what's wrong? And as I'm laying there gasping for air, <clears throat> they realized that it wasn't on. And even when the enemy tried to say, you're not leaving. Mm. Hallelujah. God sustained my breath long enough for somebody to come in and turn the oxygen back on. And it was all because the enemy understood that my assignment was far greater. Yes. 
than it was before I laid there. So he says, you know what, I'm going to take you out now because you got too much influence. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know one thing. That laying in the hospital bed, un unable to breathe on my own, really, I still called the saints of God and told them, don't worry about me. You keep praising God. You let the angel go on. You let God use you. I'm all right. This is exactly what I'm all right. Don't worry about me. God has already told me I'm going to be all right. My job is, if I'm not all right, my job is to know that I quit you enough to be able to take over. Whether I'm here or not. And apparently God said they got a little more learning to do because he said, I still got to stay. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm not mad at him at all for letting me stay. Hallelujah. But what I share with you is this. I got a reason to rejoice every day. And your story may not be my story. Mm. But I'm quite sure you got something in your story that show don't match to my story, that my stories don't match to either. Amen. And God's giving you victory over it. Amen. 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 Pop, do you know nowadays kids are not even making it to 40 years old? True, because of the way that the world has been set up now. And so folks say, I, I got about two and a half weeks, three weeks, I'll be 57. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. 57, y'all. Mm -hmm. I never thought in all my 57 years I'd be 57. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. amen. Yes, yes. But I'm grateful to become 57. Yes. The Lord yes. Yes. Because I realize more now than I ever did before. Yes. Tomorrow's not promised. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. I know a young man, bodybuilder, mm -hmm. strong, got sick with COVID, created problems in his heart, had to get a heart monitor or something on him, and no sooner than he got the heart monitor, he didn't live but maybe 30 more days. He passed away in his sleep. Amen. Complications. Mm -hmm. to the same thing Hallelujah. that attacked my body. And he was young enough to be my son. Yeah. I say all that to say what? We can't take life for granted. Yeah. Every day is another day for us Amen. to rejoice Amen. and be glad. Yes. Yes, Lord. Pastor West, the thing that got you in a place where you're still able to serve God mm. is your rejoicing and being glad in and God has given you another victory. Yes. Even though we look at it as being something that's traumatic, God gave you another victory. He didn't give you a victory because he, he, he says, okay, I'm, I'm going to take back what I let you. That's not what he did. He gave you strength. Amen. Amen. For somebody to see Hallelujah. the nature of God on your life and in Amen. your life. Yes, sir. And to be able to understand if you can still stand here. Yes. Yes. He did what Tony Evans did. Yes. Tony Evans' wife died. Two days before New Year's Eve. And he stood in the pulpit to preach the watch night service. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it was the strength of God because he rejoiced and was glad every day. So God gave him the strength that he needed on that day. Amen. No matter how he grieved, he was able to articulate a word mm. given to him by God yes. to inspire someone else mm. who couldn't look past why he was standing there. Yes, yes. But was blessed by what was coming from his mouth because yes. he rejoiced and was glad. Right. Pastor West. Nobody may not ever tell you hmm. about how many sermons you've preached since hmm. you've gone through what you've gone through. Yeah. Yeah. Or how many words of encouragement that you've given. Or how many prayers. Or just your smile. Yes, I come by and tell you that somebody has been blessed by your yes. strength. Yes. Because you recognize this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And since I'm still here, I may as well just give it all up to him. Yes. I'm telling you, my brother, stand strong. Yes. Keep your head to the sky. Yes. No one understand that God's work for you is not done yet. And every once in a while, he got to slow you down so he can refresh you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you may not understand how he slows down. But sometimes he got to push the refresh button. Because we'll let so many uh, cookies and pop-ups come up in us that, that, that our operating system will start moving slow. Yeah. If y'all know about the computers, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And every once in a while, you got to push refresh. Yeah. You got to go into the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the system and clean out some cookies. Yeah. And when God sets us down, he cleans out our cookies amen, so that amen. we can come back and be ready to stand. Yeah. So y'all pray that tonight and tomorrow night and Tuesday night that God puts you fresh and clean out my cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I told my son, you get married Tuesday, 
I'm going to see my grandkids on Monday evening. Amen. Tuesday, I'm going to see y'all. We're going to go eat. Then I'm going to disappear. Hallelujah. Wednesday, when you wake up, I'm already be in California. Because I'm going to go and rest. Amen. Amen. Because I know that what God has for me requires for us to rest. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to go away from where I'm normally at. I'm going to go to a place where I'm not normal, normally at. And since I paid for the room, I may as well stay in it, right? Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Amen. amen. So amen. Let us look to God. Father, we thank you. We honor you. Give me some of that pretty music. We praise you and we honor you now amen. for making this day, even amen. before the foundations of the earth. Yes. You predestined this day to be here. And you know everything that goes on in this day. And regardless of all of the things that are going around us, you still allow your peace to reside in us. Amen. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. I'm asking God that you give us the fortitude yes. to take ownership over rejoicing and being glad in every day. Yes. Hallelujah. Let us wake up with that in our mouths realizing that that can set the tone for the rest of the day, not just for us, but someone that may be in our vicinity that just need to feel your presence. Let us realize, God, that the things that we are going through should not have more, atten more attention, more of our attention than the one that allowed us to go through it. Yes, yes. Let us keep our hand in your unchanging hand yes. and know, God, that anything that we're going through it's just to get us to where you want us to be. Yes. So God, let us focus and refocus on who you are. Hallelujah. Let us refocus on all that you're doing. Hallelujah. And let us refocus on the fact that you love us. Yes. Beyond who we are. Yes. So therefore, we got every reason to rejoice. Yes. And be glad in the day that you made. Hallelujah. We love you, God. We honor you. We glorify your holy name. Now, there may be someone here that don't know Christ for the pardon of your sins. You may say, I want to get to know him. Or you may say, you want to rededicate your life. That yes. is you right now. You just simply raise your hand. I want to get to know God or rededicate my life. Then the next call is for you that may want to join this church. And you say, hey, I like what's going on over here. And I'd like to be a part. If that's you, just raise your hand. Amen. As we see, there is none and there is still yet room at the cross. We love you, God. We honor you. We praise and adore you. In the name of Jesus. Let us get prepared for our love offering. Amen. And then we'll prepare ourselves to go. Amen. Now I was smelling vittles. I didn't make sure that my nose wasn't deceiving me. But it's cooking downstairs. Amen. So we're going to pray over the food. Amen. Amen. And uh, I want you all to rejoice that the God made this day before you go and rejoice about what's going in your bed. Amen. 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 Don't let the food get no praise to the Lord that provided us the ability to have the food. Amen. Let us come. Let us come. Let us come. And get ready and get ready and get ready.